Greetings and thank you for joining us in this fifth week of our Lenten series at Bethlehem Lutheran Church, centered around spirituality and the 12 steps of AA. As we begin our time together and this message that we share, I would like to center us on some text from James chapter 1, verses 22 through 25. But be doers of the word, and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves and on going away immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. So we focus this week on steps 9 and 10 of the 12 steps. Step 9, make direct amends to such people wherever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others. And step 10, continued to take personal inventory, and when we were wrong, promptly admit it. These two steps following all of the steps that we have had, but especially last week, where we reflect on those whom we have hurt, is true Holy Spirit work. And I do not mean to say that, in that steps 9 and 10 can only be completed by the Holy Spirit, but that their success is placed directly in the hand-to-hand -hand connection between God's Spirit and us. This week, we zoom in on this discernment process in looking at what is the next right step. And the Holy Spirit is a wonderful partner in this deep soul work. Throughout most of the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit is frequently referred to as wisdom, or in the Greek Old Testament translation, Sophia. Proverbs 8 outlines her gifts and role in creation. So we hear some verses from Proverbs 8, a song written for Sophia, Wisdom. I, wisdom, live with prudence, and I attain knowledge and discretion. I have good advice and sound wisdom. I have insight. I have strength. I walk in the way of righteousness along the paths of justice. The Lord created me at the beginning of his work, the first of his acts long ago. I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world and delighting the human race. Hear instruction and be wise. Do not neglect it. For whoever finds me finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. But those who miss me injure themselves. All who hate me love death. When we miss the gifts of discernment and wisdom, we may not only injure ourselves, as Proverbs writes, but injure others as well. Step nine then invites us to make direct amends to those whom we have hurt, listed previously in step eight. And someone who was just going through this mental checklist of the 12 steps making their way through and just doing what was needed, would then dive straight forward into apologies, wanting to correct the wrong as quickly as possible once they realized it. But I deeply believe that the second half of the step is just as important as the first, if not more. Making amends when possible directly, except... When, what, when to do so would injure the person you are trying to apologize to or others. If not done in a way that is accompanied by God's spirit of wisdom, an apology can be more hurtful than the original act. In his book, Breathing Underwater, Richard Rohr highlights, especially for married couples, as an example, it takes seven to ten years for most couples to learn how to fight fair. It takes a lot of discernment and wisdom. How often 
are our apologies laced with excuses or attempts to validate our actions, or worse, making ourselves into victims as well. And for those of us who have a couple years under our belts, how much more wisdom is there in just saying, I'm sorry, I was wrong, and I hurt you. Please forgive me. Rather than trying to come up with reasons or examples or ways to deserve their forgiveness. Total disclosure is also not always fair or even helpful. It takes deep conversation with the spirit of wisdom to know what others need to hear or even have the right to hear. If knowing the full motives of why you did something would deeply hurt someone, then wisdom brings us peace that passes understanding that says to keep it to ourselves. Not everyone has the right to know everything. But those who you have hurt deserve amends that heal and do not bring more harm. There is a reason that making amends does not happen until step nine. Wisdom requires time and reflection in order to bring true healing. Step 10 then continues to build on all nine steps before it. It is centered in this radical connectedness between us as beloved children of God and the rest of God's creation and how we live in it. Walk back with me to step three. We made a decision to turn our lives and our wills over to God as we understood God. Our personal inventory then is placed into God's loving and care-filled hands. And if we trust that Jesus has removed our shortcomings, and if the spirit of wisdom accompanies us in this reconciliation, then we have the ability to have this zoomed-out view of our lives, where we can take a personal inventory and reflect daily. We come to confession each and every week because it is important to take this personal inventory and apologize and fix things as soon as we notice them. This is kind of a menial um, example, but I have a terrible habit of putting off very small household tasks for days and weeks and sometimes even months. It's the gift of living alone with two cats and the only one who notices it. And these tasks are usually things that sometimes will take me five to 20 minutes. Most recently, it was the pile of recycling that had built itself up to almost my own height in my closet where I keep it in a bin. And each time I saw this closet, right as I walked in the door, it filled me with shame. I noticed it growing daily. I've been working really hard to try and recycle more, but it just couldn't seem to be something I could find time to take care of. And so it grew and grew and grew, and in that it became almost more to me than just a pile of recycling. But this reflection of my own self, it would be much easier to just throw it away, to start over when I had time again. But am I someone who doesn't do the right thing because it's hard? How can I care for myself or others or even my pets if I can't even complete this? Does it reflect on who I am as a person if I can't even do this small thing well? We're all familiar with this script that goes through our minds, that tells us that we are not worthy because of what we do. And I found myself wrapped up in my wrongs each and every time I saw them, not taking a personal inventory in the arms and hands of God, but instead placing my identity in my sin rather than God. I needed to go back to step three, even in this little part of my life because I was so zoomed in on where I was at and the bad things that I thought were reflecting myself 
that I forgot who I was and whose I was. I did not trust in the God that I entrusted my care and will and life to. Step 10 can only happen if we have done the nine steps before. Our continued inventory and how we respond to our daily wrongdoings is centered in this trust that our lives and will are in the hands of the one who cared and created us. From Romans 3, For there is no distinction, since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are now justified by his grace as a gift. Through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. Our identity as children of God allows us to see ourselves as God sees us. To view ourselves with the same compassion and caring that God has for us not labeling ourselves or endless digging and judging on every little imperfection that we have. It is in our unawareness that we hurt ourselves and others. And it is in our awareness that comes with step 10, that we fully embody God's love in and through us. We trust in God's love for us, in love that takes away all fears of admitting our wrongdoings. There is a book in the Bible, the Catholic version, that has been taken out of our Lutheran version of the Bible, but it is called Wisdom. And it is centered around the same spirit of wisdom that we began our time together. And I would like to share with you a reading from Wisdom, chapters 11, verse 24 through 12, verse 1. For you love all things that exist, and detest none of the things that you have made. For you would not have made anything if you had hated it. How would anything have endured if you had not willed it? Or how would anything not called forth by you have been preserved? God, you spare all things, for they are yours, O Lord you who love the living, for your immortal spirit is in all things. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.